Hi. About a week or two ago, my 17-year-old stepdaughter, Ying, posted this picture on her social media. I thought, what a haunting picture. Looks rather ghostly. That inspired me to tell a ghost story. One of the more popular tourist destinations here in Bangkok is the Skywalk at the King Power Mahanakon Building, which is that building off in the distance. It's designed to look pixelated. The Mahanakon Building has one of those glass skywalks at the top where you can walk out on the glass sidewalk and scare yourself to death if you're afraid of heights, that kind of thing. I thought I would take my family there. Now, my family is my girlfriend, Boa Cow, and her three children, Ying, Kelly, and Pinky. There are thousands of videos about the King Power Skywalk out there on YouTube. And, you know, a family outing to a skywalk on top of a skyscraper is not the most interesting video in the world. So I thought that I would add in the story about why it's considered to be a bad luck haunted building. You see, in order to build the Mahanakan building, they had to move graves. There was a Chinese cemetery in place where they had where they had planned to build the building. So they disinterred some corpses and moved them. Here in Thailand, you don't mess with the spirits of the dead. That caused great negative folklore around the whole Mahanakan project and it was known as the Bad Luck Building. Here's the bad luck synopsis. Pace Management was the company that designed and built the Mahanakon Building. They spent lavishly and went bankrupt. The company that took the building over that acquired the property from Pace Management was King Power. Two months after acquiring the building, the CEO of King Power died in a helicopter crash. Later on down the road, the King Power management people were sitting in a meeting trying to discuss ways to lower costs. And while they were doing that, a sculpture that was originally purchased by Pace Management that cost a million dollars was being lowered onto the plaza. It was called Bangkok Seoul, and according to the architect, was a compilation of words and symbols and the human body. Well, one of those symbols was an old Sanskrit symbol that meant corpse. In addition to a bankruptcy and a helicopter crash, the new owners, King Power, were redirecting their marketing efforts toward the Chinese market. They were targeting Chinese tourists coming to Thailand to try to induce them to invest in the Mahanakon building. COVID happened. Nobody can deny that the building has been beset with bad luck. I spent two days reviewing the information and writing little notes down on index cards to refresh my memory, memory while I was shooting the video. And I guess you could say it was a seven act story. I arranged to hire a tricked out van that I had discovered in one of my last video shoots and we were all set to go. About two hours prior to leaving, Ying got sick. She wasn't feeling well. We had to cancel the trip. Story. I'm really disappointed that I didn't get to tell my whole seven act story. Even the kids were disappointed. They were running with it. Here's Pinky, who dressed up in this really cute, dark Chinese dress to go along with the theme. I wanted to use that picture. I think she's adorable. So that's it. That's a synopsis of the seven part story nicely encoded on little index cards that you're not going to see the video of because today I'm headed off to Chiang Mai in northern Thailand and I'm going by train. This is the Hualampong Terminal Station, Bangkok Terminal Station, and it's nearing its demise as well. On December 24th, it will be closed for good. So I'm taking one of the last trains out on the northern route 
the overnight express to Chiang Mai city up north. The transportation authority of Bangkok, of Thailand, has built a new terminal station, the Bang Su station, that will receive trains coming, coming into the city. But there's a move afoot, or at least there's gossip about amongst locals and on social media, to try to save this old station, turn it into a museum. Frankly, I don't think it's all that special. It's just like a big old hangar. It's surrounded by small retail stores. One of them is a Thai foot massage place that I might go partake of before I leave. I'm very early, I got plenty of time to kill. It does have a nice floor. Don't let me knock it too much. And the last time I was here, there was no air conditioning. Now it is air conditioned now, so apparently it was just broken the last time I was here. The point being, it's an old place and I don't see it as being all that special. I'm from New York City, where Grand Central Station is indeed grand. And I'm only picking Grand Central because it's my hometown and I have some video footage of it available to use here. There are some really grand stations around the United States and around the world. I would not put this in that category. It's just a big old hangar that has an okay floor. The station does have some impressive artwork, portraits of uh, old uh, Thai and Siamese kings. The one in the center here would be Rama 5. Rama 5 had this uh, railway system built. So that's why I guess he gets a great big portrait. While this is not the original station, the original station is a little bit further north, north that was demolished when this one was built. Uh, Rama 5 saw the value of a railroad that consolidated his power throughout the realm of Siam. Thailand was known as Siam at the time. And it was kind of a feudal state according to Wikipedia and the railroad helped this particular king consolidate his power. The other portraits here, this is Rama 9. Rama 9 was the king when I moved here and he's a much beloved individual. He's still mourned today. He passed away about four years ago and at the time he was the longest living monarch in the world. I think that title now goes to Queen Elizabeth of England. And this guy over here is uh, the current king, Rama 10. What can we say about Rama 10? He's the kind of guy I think I'd like to go out on a weekend and party with. This is the second class sleeper car, which is very nice. And we just begin pulling out of the uh, Hua Lumpung station uh, for an on time departure. In 13 hours, we will arrive in Chiang Mai. A little bit later, an attendant will come and convert the seat into a bed. There's one up here as well. If I was traveling with a companion, they would do that also. And uh, you slide a curtain across here and give you a little bit of privacy. It's kind of nice. Now, I took a similar trip on an Amtrak in Texas when I was there, I guess about two months ago, three months ago. And while well, the Amtrak train had a few more amenities than this one might have in terms of uh, dining cars and things like that, it wasn't much different. Now, I had a, a little bit more privacy in that, that you had a solid enclosure here as opposed to a curtain. I don't know. I'm happy with this. This cost a thousand baht, that's about thirty dollars for a thirteen hour ride. The fourteen hour ride across Texas costs way more than that. I think it was about two hundred and fifty dollars. So get a lot more bang for your buck in Thailand.
How's that for a group of ne'er do wells? Hello, taxi guys. It's like the swarm of the taxi guys. This is a little bit like a. Uh, <laughs> I have a car. Uh, kind of like a zombie movie. So here's the other end of the line, the Chiang Mai Railway Terminal Station. And my way of viewing the world, I kind of like this better than uh, Hua Lumpong in Bangkok. This has a tininess to it that I find interesting. This uh, station, uh, this line to uh, from Bangkok to Chiang Mai was completed in 1922, as I said, helping to solidify uh, or, or unify the country under King Rama V's rule. In 1943, when Thailand was occupied by the Japanese, uh, the Allies bombed that particular station out of existence. And uh, this was rebuilt in 1945. At a time then the Allies, the Americans especially, were beginning to install their clandestine services all over Thailand. That will be the subject of an upcoming video because they're still here today. Thanks for watching this uh, kind of impromptu uh, travel vlog and uh, I'll do a few more while I'm up here in Chiang Mai. Thanks for watching.